Hello and welcome to this CDP Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up and use Avago PFC 200 with CDP Studio. The tutorial will show you how to add Avago PFC IO server component into your project and how to add IO modules to the Avago PFC IO server. I will show how to use CDP Studio to set up automatic scaling from engineering values into hardware values. We will use logical units such as 0 to 1 in the user interface, while scaling operators will transform this into hardware values representing 4 to 20 milliamps. I will also show how to set up an alarm to notify the user when something is wrong. And finally, I will connect everything to a user interface. I assume you have already set up the Vago PFC to work with CDP Studio. For instructions on how to do that, Please look in the Vago PFC IO help manual in CDP Studio. The Vago PFC controller I have here in my office is set up with four modules. A 750-431 8-channel digital input, a 750-530 8-channel digital output, a 750-554 2-channel analog current output, and a 750-454 two-channel analog current input. In addition, it has a 750-600 end module, which is not shown in the configuration, but is required for correct operation. The modules have been set up so that the analog outputs are connected to the analog inputs. The first digital input is connected to a button, and the first digital output controls a light. The IO server user interface that was made in the IO server user interface tutorial will be used here to demonstrate how the IO integration works. I recommend looking at that video first if you have not yet seen it. Open CDP Studio and then load the IO server user interface from the IO server user interface tutorial. In configure mode, right click the system, select add, CDP application. We then add a console application that we intend to run on the Vago PFC target and name it Vago PFC app. Select the application that was added and from the resource tree add a Vago PFC IO server component into the application. The Vago PFC IO server component is a CDP IO server that converts CDP signals to values that the Vago PFC understands and converts Vago PFC values into CDP signals. With the component selected, in the resource tree you can find all the available IO modules for the Vago PFC IO server under the Vago IO modules node. The Vago PFC IO server FS property decides how often the inputs and outputs are updated each second. You should set this to a reasonable number depending on your application. For our use, 100 Hz is ok. As mentioned in the beginning, my Vago PFC has a 431, a 530, a 554 and a 454 module in that order. We add these modules to the Vago PFC IO server configuration by searching the resource tree. Search for 431 and from the suggestion list double click the 75431 module to add it. Then search for 530 and double click the 750-530 module from the list to add it to the Vago PFC IO server. Search for 554 and add the 750-554 module. And finally search for 454 and add the 750-454 module. Note that the configured order of the modules must be the same as the physical. Power modules and other modules that do not have any I.O. are omitted from the configuration. We want to work with sensible names when we configure the system. So, from the modules table, rename the first module to M1 and the other modules to M2, M3 and M4. Then go into the analog M3 module and rename AO0 to speed out. Go into the M4 module and rename the AI0 to speed feedback. 
As you may remember from the IO Server user interface tutorial, we wanted the values to range between minus 1 and 1. Since our analog modules handle 4 to 20 milliamp values, it does not make sense for us to handle negative values. We will later change the range so that it goes from 0 to 1. In CDP Studio, we typically handle this conversion from engineering units to hardware units by using scaling operators. Make sure to always check the manufacturer manuals for the modules you use so that the values are converted correctly. Select the speed out signal and in the resources search for scale and add a scale operator of type double. Select the scale operator and add two scaling points. For this tutorial, we want to use the 4 to 20 milliamp range for the I.O. If we look into the Vago documentation for the 75554 analog module, we can see that it expects a positive 16-bit value ranging from 0 to 32,767. Go into the first scaling point and make sure the in value is 0 and the out value is 0. Then go into the second scaling point and set the in value to 1 and the out value to 32,767. We have now created a scaling so that when we set 0 to the speed out signal, it will send a value that makes the IO module output 4 milliamps. Similarly, when we set the value to 1 to the speed out signal, it will be scaled to a value that causes the IO module to output 20 milliamps. We add similar scaling points for the speed feedback channel. In the documentation for the 750454 analog module, we can see that it expects a positive 16 bit value ranging from 0 to 32,760. For the first scaling point, we want the scaling value in to be 0, and the out should also be 0. For the second scaling point, we want 20 milliamps to be converted to 1. The Vago documentation for the 454 module states that the value representing 20 milliamps is 32,760. So we put that into the scaling point in, and we put 1 into the scaling point out. We also want an alarm for the input, in case of cable break or invalid values. Select the speed feedback signal, then click in the resources and select alarm short, as we want to react to the hardware side value. Click into the alarm and set text to measured value is outside allowed range. Since the Vago module documentation states that bits 1 and 2 are used for overrange and underrange reporting, we set input mask to 3 and limit to 1. The alarm will then trigger when the mask value is 1 or higher. We set level to warning and make sure the alarm is listed before the scale operator in the operator table. Now go into module M1 and rename DI0 to button. Go into module M2 and rename DO0 to light. We can now connect the user interface to the control application. Select the IOTest GUI app, then click Design Mode. Select the slider in the Analog Output group, search for CDP and locate the CDP routing property. This is where we connect the slider to the control system signal. We want to affect the value before the operators are applied, so we type in Vago PFC app dot vago pfc io server dot m3 dot speed out dot internal value. This connects the slider to the physical output in the vago pfc io. Search for min and set min value to zero since we're dealing with a signal in the range zero to one. Select the raw value dashes in the analog output group and set CDP routing to Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot M3 dot speed out dot value. 
This will make it show the value of speed out after the operators are applied. In the analog input group, select the slider and find CDP routing. Type in Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot M4 dot speed feedback dot value to get the value after all operators have been run. Search for min and set min value to zero as we're dealing with a signal in the range 0 to 1. Then select the raw value dashes label and find CDP routing. Set that to Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot M4 dot speed feedback dot internal value. It will then show the speed feedback before any operators are applied. In other words, the raw value from the input. Connecting the digital IOs is straightforward. Select the digital out checkbox, locate CDP routing and set it to Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot M2 dot light. Then select the digital in checkbox, locate CDP routing and set it to Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot M1 dot button. The light is now controllable from the user interface, and button presses will show as the digital input checkmark. Finally, we want to connect the IO server state. Select the current state double dashes label and find CDP routing. Set it to Vago PFC app dot Vago PFC IO server dot current state. Save the user interface by hitting Ctrl S and select Configure Mode. To test the Vago PFC, we must make sure it runs on the correct device. Pair the Vago PFC controller, select the correct network, and in the Vago PFC app, make sure you use the Vago PFC ARM v7 32 bit toolkit. The video Deploy to a Network Device shows how to pair and deploy to a device. We can now run the system. The user interface will run on our local PC, while the Vago PFC app will run on the Vago PFC target. Right-click the system, select Run and Connect. When the applications are running and connected, the user interface will show the IO server state as online. When we move the analog output slider to the right, you will see that the analog input moves with it. The analog input may jump around a bit. This may be due to noise in the analog to digital conversion. If you disconnect the wire going into the 454 module first terminal, the cable break alarm should trigger. If you set it back in, the alarm will change status from UNAC set to UNAC. If you double click the alarm in the event list, you acknowledge that you have seen it, and the alarm will not show until it is set again. If you click on the digital output, the light output will be set, and the physical light will light up. When you push the physical button, you will see that the digital input will be checked, as long as the button is pressed. That was all for this CDP Studio tutorial.